Uh, I just believe I hit the record button. <clears throat> so we should be off to the races here at the Augur meeting on March 11th, uh, 2024, which is also my dissertation anniversary. in case anyone cares. This is the day I defended my dissertation successfully. Um, how many years ago was that? Uh, actually, 15 years ago today. Is my dissertation bursary. So, congratulations to me. Um, a lot of folks weren't here last week, but, um, or at least some of you. So, I just want to point out the Climate Coach dashboard file, which, of course, I have to open. Um, this is a project that uh, my colleague and friend Bogdan Vasiliscu at Carnegie Mellon, oops, clicked on that by mistake. Uh, did with his student uh, Sophie Q, uh, who's now at Northwestern, and what I, you know, I just encourage <clears throat> folks to read through it because it uh, does reflect a bit of design work around dashboards and suggests some some items that might be useful on dashboards. I don't need to spend a lot of time on it. I just want to kind of refer you to that as we go through the design process. And uh, does anyone have any questions about that? Forgive me, the power of suggestion from EDOC describing his cold earlier seems to have caused congestion for me. Okay, um, the next thing, Lamy, and uh, we didn't have, uh, I don't think you were here last time, but uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more in depth about the design process and how we might go through it and really kind of, I suppose, listen to you um, and, and get your perspective <clears throat> and answer your questions and kind of just start down an active design road a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I wasn't around last week, so I took um, some time I had to start some designs. Yeah. Oh, you did start? Did you want to have stuff you want to show us? Yes. Okay, I will stop my share. And you should be able to share, but I will make you co-host, which almost guarantees that you'll be able to share. I say almost because I have no idea what Zoom changed in its version oh, updates. <laughs> oh, there is a new update. <laughs> no, there's always a new update. Um, uh, soon getting logged out. Can you see my screen? Yeah, things are a okay. bit small so far, but. Yeah, okay. So I thought it would be nice to use the design style of the badging websites. Ah. It presents chaos in like a very visual and visually appealing way. And I like the style, so uh, I use that. Um, okay. Okay, this is Okay, so the architecture now is to have like to maintain the welcome page, which um contains information about how to use it, not um how to log into Augur and so on. But then it's also so encourage you to use the search feature, which is like the first point of entry into the visualizations. Um, okay, so okay. If, if if I'm remembering, sorry to interrupt, if I remember the dis one of the discussions we last had about this was that the search has a lot of power, but people aren't seeing it. So what I see in this design is uh, a recognition that people are not seeing the search and the solution being to present it to them in exactly the way that they see it on Google, which is a very strong prompt to use the search. Am I yeah, on the right exactly. track there? Okay. Uh, and then the use of the chaos badging design structure that just gives us some consistency, I think would be what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so uh, the search feature contains the filter button. You mentioned um, like really 
implementing this or making it like a core part of the search function. And I have questions on this, but I added it. But let me first explain how the search works. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, let me go to the components. Okay, so what? We lost your audio, Lami. Lami. Your mic cut. I think, I think it's not the audio because the mouse is stuck too, so it looks like... Uh, she might have lost her internet entirely. Yeah, it's the internet connection. Yeah. Uh, I'm least... sure she's like fucking to get it back. Um, uh, I think I like the design so far. Callie, do you, are you able to comment or? Yeah, I mean, I, I like the look of it. I don't really, I just want to like look at it a little Listen bit. Listen some more. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, for about 30 seconds, I want to hear what she has to say and also it will be good to sit down and like look at it more than just on the spot and because yeah, it's also going to be what can we implement um and what Actually. type of like, we're trying to see of what we can inherently implement in dash and then mm -hmm. what would be done in custom bootstrap and on the custom bootstrapping side, if it's going to be be from like my team, that's going to be a James thing, which as you've come to learn, James is kind of out of commission for a lot of stuff. So it's just, I'm yeah. kind of looking at it. What, what can we implement in the next month or so? And what's going to be something that's going to take a more long-term um, investment. And then where is that coding work going to come from? Right. Well, and the, for sure, the, um, and I have the, while well, we wait for Lam Lamy to return, I did bring up the Figma <clears throat> document that she was showing us. So I think this is where, uh, where Lamy was. And I think she was showing us. I have so, I have like three of these apps now and they all let me drag using different stuff. So this is what we were looking at. And then over here, it looks like, you know, we can find one. <clears throat> this is blank. Yeah. Without Lamy, I don't know what I'm showing you. <laughs> so this is the lower part of the page. Current, it still exists. It's just brought down lower. And I think there was another page down here. Oh, okay, so here yeah, I, I there's a suggestion of left nav instead of um, top nav. Yeah, and that makes sense because then you would, I mean, I guess for me, I would look at the drop downs being the list of visualizations, and that might be really helpful towards the problem of people not like being able to find what visualizations they need or kind of like stuff like that. And so you the say the drop down. When you say the drop down being the yes. visualization, I, what do you mean? Um, you see how um, there's a line right there and it says search bar populated by per repo analysis. The oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes, now I do, yes. And so that's, I think that might be a good solution to some of the other problems that we've been having. So I really like the design. It's just going to be sitting down and figuring out what, how much of this I can create with Dash and how much, and their custom bootstraps, um, like files versus how much of this would need to be done because um, ourselves. And by ourselves, you mean like some going to some kind of custom Jerry, I don't want to say it out loud. Tell me there's something to customize you that isn't using JavaScript. I mean, it's just going to be a boots. It's just a bootstrap <clears> template <throat> or not template, <throat> but just like, I mean, I would expect yeah. to overwrite everything using bootstrap. Um, okay. Well, um, uh, I, I think, I think um, there could be several approaches depending on what 
depending on how much Lamy uh, designs these, because I've not I've not used Dash before. But also, I understand that there is a group of folks who would love to like work on um, some of these components. So probably if yeah. Dash can implement most of these, we could maybe put the scaffold together and um, put the most important things, the most important functionalities there and let probably some other people do some final touches on most of these things. Yeah. yeah. With Dash, it makes it a lot like to get everything location wise where you see it on this screen, I'm not worried about Dash. Like, that will all be really easy to do. Um, it's kind of like one of the reasons that makes Dash good to work with. It's more of the styling on top is what is going to probably need more custom work. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. that's, and when I saw the design, that was my first um, thought that uh, how much did uh, Sean and um, and uh, Kali expect to be overhauled from the initial design because this is so drastic, totally yeah. different from the previous design. It's drastic, I would say, looks wise, but for me, like it doesn't feel that distant from what we have. Like, it look, I mean, it's it's the it's the, I see all the changes that's been causing users problems. Okay. And so this all makes sense to me. And also from like a code standpoint, I think about how it's implemented now. And a lot of these changes I don't think would be that um, drastic. Like putting that search, putting the, like what you have on the top bar, like with the different pages for the visualizations, putting that on the side, that isn't in a dash standpoint going to be that difficult. That makes sense to me. So then it's a little bit, uh, more broken apart and people would be able to see the list of like the different types of visualizations, which I think would be super helpful. Um, the biggest thing that we'll have to figure out is the, how different the welcome page is versus every other page. I like that design a lot. It's just with how we have the app currently implemented, it's mm -hmm. going to be adding. Cause right now you have like the, we use the, this is like an index where that's how the search bar is on every page and that's how the like top bar is on every page and then the then there's pretty much each of the pages as we know it like welcome <coughs> right. um contributors like all the other ones it's like almost like shelled within it um but it'll be good to talk to james about this as well but this is this seems like exactly what it I was looking for personally when it came to design stuff. I think it looks great. And yeah, uh, and it looks like really it's not designed by a developer. It's designed by no, like, exactly. <laughs> I'm like this is great. everything like it seems logical. Like I, <laughs> yeah, I really yeah. like it. It, it, um, it, it. it makes me think of um the book. Don't make me think. It's like a UI design kind of handbook, and um, some of these things the way they've been placed right now, they give less ambiguity to what stuff does on the website. So it's really like um, a very um, um, intuitive design with a very good user experience in case it comes to to pass. Well, I, I don't know. I think I should text Lamy. I think I have another. Yeah, go ahead and give Lamy a text. You know, yeah. one, one thing that she was uh, directing us to is whether or not or what functionality should exist in this filter so i don't think there's a page that lifts out what the filter is supposed to do um <clears throat> i guess for me the filter would be like if you just wanted to see like rep like the three things are like repositories organizations and user groups and so maybe you filter of only wanting to see one of those three or two of those three that's something that james and i have actually talked about implementing um There's... so then people know what they're selecting and then the only yeah. other thing that's added that i still that the only thing that i see missing on this is the bot filtering um which i think would be a little bit confusing to keep together because it's like one filter is, deter is determining what search result are going to show up by the bot filtering is something that filters the actual data and visualizations. 
um, that would be the only thing that I will just have to figure out how to fit that into all of this. Because the bot filtering is a pretty big thing. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Well, I made a copy of this so that I could annotate it. But I don't know. Maybe I copied the wrong thing. Yeah, if we can, uh, oh. I just don't want to edit. I don't want to edit Lamy's um Lamy's work. So I would say no, I don't like, want to. I don't want. Yeah, I want. Yeah. And all I was gonna do was annotate it, in case Lamy's not able to make it back. Um, while we're in a pause, Sean, how is Grafish looking? I just um. I haven't looked. Okay, perfect. I'll, I'll if you could take a. Yeah you um but yeah i'm excited to show this to james i can i i think that he is going to be very excited to see this because this just feels like it's solving a lot of the problems that we had no idea how to go about solving so there's um, um on the filter the question i have is oops okay maybe i'm not gonna do that i suppose that the question i have is one of the things that we looked at uh, a few weeks ago is the way that uh, Bitergia's uh, Grimoire Lab front end gives you a filter on every possible field in the database. And that was something that some people have indicated that they like. I, I find it overwhelming to see that. Yeah. I, I want to filter on bots. Until, yeah. Yeah. And that's so, like for me, it's not even up for. Like until we make this large change, I don't even want to like bring that yeah. up for the discussion of like whether we should do that or not. I think she's back. Okay. Yeah, so sorry about that. My data expired. Ah. No. Uh, oh. It's a new month. <laughs> and thanks for calling, Enoch. Uh, yeah. Okay. I just just was making sure you're able to join in, or we could go to something else. So while you were while you were gone, let me. Um, I made a copy of it, but then I decided not to. Do you want to share again, Lamy? Yes. Or, okay. Um, while you're putting bringing it up, I made a few notes in the in the notes while we were talking that uh, folks like the left navigation. It makes sense. The changing navigation to the side makes sense, which is the same thing. Uh, the, making the search bar more prominent. They love it. The design looks great. Clearly not designed by a developer. Uh, we had started talking about the intentions for the filter, which I think is where you left off with us, Lammy. Lammy. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and for this one, let me just show how it's meant to look like, because in my eyes, it looks, I don't like it. <laughs> But this is how it's going to look on um, a desktop. Okay, while that loads, I'll just move on to this. Okay. To, sorry, the filter, yeah. Okay, so the filter is supposed to be able, you're supposed to be able to select a date range as well as choose from one of the presets and then and click whether or choose whether you want git hop both field. I don't know what this means to be on or off. Yeah, by it's, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot of users in open source now who are not users, for example, but are bots. Uh, in the Kubernetes project, a lot of the workflows associated with pull request review, for example, are automated to, to do those checks and then approve a pull request to the next step before a human ultimately releases it into the main branch. And this allows a lot of people to work and have their work tested and evaluated in the context of everyone else's. So uh, bots do a lot of things, whether it be from notification to full development workflow components. Um, and if we wanna actually understand human activity alone, we would filter the bots out because automation doesn't reflect equivalence and activity, if that makes sense. And so mm -hmm. we actually all to have that all like right now, and that's how I want to. The like it is 
set to always filter on bots unless somebody says otherwise. Uh, okay. Because all of the information, it's pretty much a lot of it's noise unless you're specifically looking for that bot information. Yeah, I really like the idea of this filter. I just think that it might be out of all the things that I've like we've seen with the design, this might have to be like a phase two situation because this would require every visualization like to be restructured. Pretty much the entire app would need to be restructured to be able to apply this style of a filter, which I can see it being super useful. It just might need to be like a phase two of this. If okay. I'm understanding correctly, oh, go ahead, Lamy. Uh, just wanted to ask if only GitHub filter is what's necessary now. Um, the two filters that would be great to have, and we were just talking about this, that they're kind of do for two different type of filters, would be at yeah, the GitHub bot filter, and then looking at like the search result, like having the search results of the actual repository options be a filter, so that the users could choose whether they want to see user groups, repo or organizations or just repositories. And like, the default would be to see them all, but um, users could just like select on that. So then they know when they select Microsoft, that's selecting Microsoft, the org, instead of Microsoft, Microsoft as like the repository. Mm -hmm. That again, like so, the, the, that <clears throat> filtering doesn't have to be around, like, a part of like the first phase of this. That's just something that James and I have been talking about doing as of recent. Okay. And right now I'm just okay. racking my brain a little bit to try to think of other things that folks mentioned as being useful to filter on. <clears throat> but nothing comes to mind. So good. Anything further, Lamy? I love where this is oh. going, by the way. There was a lot of love for this design expressed while you were off the call. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, okay, so I have some questions. I noticed that on the current websites, you can select multiple repositories. But on the visualization page, I didn't notice like the difference between selecting a single one and selecting multiple ones. So I can, so each, there's different types of visualizations. There's only four, or I guess right now actively three visualizations that can only look at a single repository. So you're able to select for those visualizations when you want to view a single repository. So for the OSS scorecard and repo information, you can't show an aggregate of repositories for that. In the same way, you can't show an aggregate of repositories for our heat map visualization because that's looking at the file breakdown of a single repository. So that's why there is like a option on those pages to select a single repository while every other visualization is automatically populated with all of the repositories in the search bar. Okay, so this could mean that we need like a search feature for individual page, individual pages. Um, um okay. Not for so all the pages. With... Only the pages with, so I'd say like the repo overview and the heat map pages are the only two pages that need the ability to filter to one repository. The heat map is called code base. My bad. I just, it's just code base is the, page with the heat map visualizations and then repo overview. Yeah. What's up, Sean? I just want to throw out a design prompt idea that perhaps all of the visualizations that you view a single repository on might arrive. We might arrive at that in a slightly different way by going through a repository level analysis so that it's a little bit more clear to the user. And I don't know if this is good design or not. It's just what came to my head. Is 
is sort of like, okay, I'm in the chaos org. And if I want to look at the details for the, the heat map for a chaos project, I can drill into repo X or repo Y. And I might see all of the different visualizations that are one repo at a time when I drill in, even if technically it's not a, a drill in or drill down, but it's a... If we had more, <clears> I would agree <throat> with that. But it's really, okay. it's four, but I mean, it's just the repo overview page, which I view to be separate mm -hmm. as in, like, it's just kind of its own thing mm -hmm. compared to the rest yeah. of them. The same with, like, mm -hmm. the code base, um, mm -hmm. the code base page. Those are okay. both kind of, like, uniquely their own thing. If we get to the point where we have more visualizations that are single repository, then I would, I see what you're talking about. But I think for this, since they're both so, like, just their, their own unique use case. Okay. Uh, it, yeah. It, okay. If there was, so maybe let me, if there was some kind of visual cue on the pages that only let me see one repo at a time, mm -hmm. um, that might be useful, short of what I uh, suggested at first. <clears throat> Just because it's not even, um, I don't know if it's even intuitive to me that uh, there's this granularity shift across the tabs. Um, I guess that's it's obvious uh, what, once I'm I in there. Be, yeah, that's, I guess, yeah, that's the biggest thing is that once you're in there, the mm. specificity is that it, it just says select a single repository, mm -hmm. um, for those visualizations. And so there's probably a better design way mm. of doing that. Yeah. Any, any, any other, I... Go ahead, Lemmy. Any other stuff you want to cover or discuss about design, let me? Uh, just a few questions more. Yeah, more go for it. Food. Okay, yeah, one more question. I think all my questions have been answered. Um, how customizable are Plotly, Plotly's graphs? I noticed that the graphs are created with Plotly. Incredibly. Unchanged. I mean, incredibly, um, like I, there's never been a, there's never been something that I wanted to do with the visualization that I wasn't able to because of Plotly, um, but like, like the filtering, like, and it's also because everything is in Python. Most of it, if there's a graph view or like any type of filtering we want to do, we can create it from like a pre-processing mm -hmm. standpoint in Python, but, and then show it as an option using Dash and Plotly. So the answer is a lot. Okay, how about the structure? Um, yes. Ever okay. all of it is super very much the documentation is pretty well done. Um and I would say the hardest part about it is trying to find the right like naming of the field to edit what you want, because there's so much there in their documentation. All right. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. All right. Yeah, this looks amazing. I'm really excited to show it to James. This is like solves all the things that we were like, we didn't know what to do about. So it looks great. Awesome. Um, I'm, re I'm really excited about this design work. I mean, I can't, uh, I, I'm, uh, Enoch, you mentioned that there may be some people who are able or interested in starting to contribute to implementing some of this design. Is there a next step for bringing them into this, either this meeting or this process, whichever is most appropriate, and uh, getting that started? <clears throat> You're muted, Enoch. Sorry, I was just starting to get cold. <laughs> I'm not sure whether um, how much Lamy uh, thinks that some components are now good to go because she may probably be now uh, maybe moving stuff around to test whether they are supposed to be in the right place but um i could um gather some folks from um, chaos africa to interest them in this design because they've been doing some good work in the budget yeah um, so uh, i think i think i think when lami says some some pages or components are good to go um with Kali's implementation, we can see how we create an intersection of what we can work on and what they can work on while we work together on the important components first. 
Ja. ja. Uh, um, uh, four of you are speaking at the same time, so I'm not sure. <laughs> go ahead. Go for it. Sorry, Enoch. I'll shut up. No, 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 no. I was, I was, I was just. I was done. I was done. I was just saying um, we could wait until Lami says um, these pages are good to go or I'm not making changes on this page. And then we could uh, see what to do about it. Okay. Uh, I think um, next it could be a good time to start an implementation. I'd like to show this to designers in chaos. I know a few hmm. people have um, said they are interested in this. And maybe this week they'll be able to look at it. Yeah, I do think so that James we, and I are going to... Sorry, is that your finish? Yeah, sorry. Um, next would be a good time to start the homepage first. Well, not the visualization page, I guess. I'm not sure how fast we'll be able to work. But most likely. Yeah, I... James and I are going to probably need a little bit of time to talk about the changes of... Because there are some things that will cause like pretty structural changes with how the app works. Yeah. Um, so we just need to be able to talk about it and yeah. we're going to be working a conference this week and then next week we're off because we're working over that there's so realistically, it's going to be about two weeks before James and I even have a chance to talk about this, like too deeply. So, you know, I want to make sure, yeah, and, I just and, wanted to be straight up with that. And Kelly, I'm also thinking in the um some of these changes in the ui may probably affect how the back end looks like um mm -hmm. just to make sure they work so well so probably that's something else to also look into but yeah uh, that's pretty much what i was saying that was what i was yeah. referring to uh, oh, being like okay. yeah yeah but none of that i think is going to be very difficult it's just something yeah. that we need to talk about how that would restructure the app because that's the type of stuff that i'd probably want james like the back in like pure like that type of restructuring is probably stuff that I'd want either James or I to do or somebody who wants to like really deeply learn the code base um and then like a lot of the more like design choices and different stuff like that will be really easy to do once the like structure has been like shifted around a little bit okay well then I guess um because also looking at um the front end part um I'm thinking from your conversation they are there is um i don't want to call it a stark but i know they are kind of like um technologies that you think are would do a better work which we could look into before we bring the other team that wants to work on these components also it's good to know that um we've decided that we're going to use um dash plus some other tools to make this work yeah you know, and that'll I be another think... thing that makes kind of... I talk real quick. And then there's one thing that go I want to be able to go through it to be able to say like, oh, these are the things that would be implemented in Dash, like looking into what our tech stack is, and these are the things that wouldn't. So then somebody who isn't as familiar with what Dash or what we've been doing doesn't need to go and spin their wheels for a really long time figuring out which side of the implementation that would fall under. Yeah. Yeah, Shane, you're saying something? Um, I, <clears throat> I think that um, there are some basic things to learn about Dash Plotly design that we could get a development group going with. And okay. I could provide a basic orientation to the way that the, the app is laid out in terms of its directories and where the various parts are that okay. would give folks a chance to get started without having, they don't, we don't have a solid complete design, but Mm -hmm. I, like I think, for example, there are some things we know that I expect would be pretty lightweight to play with, um, mm -hmm. like m shifting the menu navigation to the left nav. Uh, yeah. I think once folks understand the basic stuff, that would be fairly lightweight to play with. That. Um, I don't know if I'd actually agree with. Like, do you? Do you and know you, how you've done it. Like, you've you've done yeah, it. I'm so the one who, I yeah, could be I'm completely wrong. I'm talking about my butt. It, um, <laughs> I guess it's like before offering to teach people how to do it like do you know how the index page works and how that oh, like... oh no so i could show people how the apps laid out like here are the visualization oh, know, pages that's, that's yeah, and i know but... that's not this so i could i could get people so far and you're right i don't know anything about how the index page is laid out i just add stuff to it so um you've actually you're right touched the index 
<laughs> like that's I'm, uh, I'm I'm perfect. Fair. I think that you have a lot of knowledge about it, and it would be easy but, for me to spend a little bit of time. And if you wanted to go about trying to teach another group, I think that'd be possible. But I would. Those are the type of things, like things like the index page. That type of structure is what is going to be touched by this major change. Versus you've been working in the visualizations in those pages, and it's very templated. And that portion of that structure right. really isn't going to change. But mm -hmm. I just want to make sure when we introduce that, to, introduce this to people, how the pieces go together, they can get a full picture. Because if you have that, it is very modular and kind of puts together well. But because of how it's set up, you can work on one specific portion of the app and have no idea how anything else works and you're still able to like contribute a visualization. That was kind of the point of it. But now since we're going yeah. into design, now we do have to have, every, the people who are working on it does have to have a full picture view of at least the architecture of the app. And there also might be some architecture change. This, this will change some of that structure, which I think is not a bad thing. It's just is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So I, I I ran blindly down a road. I want to make sure we leave some time for Victor to talk about SPDX three. Um, so this has been a really good discussion. Just lastly on that, I'm not sure. Alami was trying to share the pages. Uh, I'm just I do not know, but do you guys think that? Everything she put on the left, um, nav, nav bar, that's all, or oh, there is something missing? Because um, I feel like there was a lot of visualizations happening, but I see a few stuff. Yeah, one thing that I would have, uh, I would want to ask, because I saw like the little bit of the drop down for the repo overview, and it had like the single select repository like visualizations. I would be curious to at least explore the idea of when you click into a visualization page on that left nav bar, it um, lists off all the visualizations. Because I think that it might be really useful to people. I think, yeah, we're looking. That's, I don't know Sorry. what you're trying to. I'm trying to get um, here, which is, I yeah. think what you're talking about. So, yeah, <clears> the <throat> left nav bar, right, is a repo overview. And I love that it's highlighted when you're clicked on that page. But try to see if whatever each of the page that you're clicked on to of have it like listing off each of the each of the visualizations. So like for context, if you're looking at the contributions page, there's like 12 different visualizations. And so it's very easy for a user to get overwhelmed and not look through all the visualizations, but maybe having it listed off in like the on that left nav bar when you click into that page where you can see, okay, here's the list of all these visualizations. Oh, I want commits over time. Then when they press it in that left drop down, it goes straight down to that visualization. So here the left nav goes as deep as the page level. And I think what you're suggesting is that it go a level, an additional level. So um, two, two levels you click into. deep. <clears throat> uh, I mean, yeah, it's, so like, it's like almost exactly in how it's being shown on the screen right now, except okay. I just didn't know if it was. Uh, this looks like it only does going into the section, which is which is unique to the repo overview page. Um, but but it kind of inspired the idea of doing like when you click into contributions, you list off it has all the different visualizations lift off list off in that like indented. Um, portion the same way that the search bar populated analysis oh. um, one is. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, Victor, do you want to take some time to talk about SPDX3? I don't know if Victor's still with us or he gave up. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're a little bit quiet, just so you know. Yeah. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I have a. Um, I'm actually just uh, been doing outreach uh, for SPDX uh, community. Uh, if you does, uh, does everyone on the call know what SPDX is? By the way. So SPDX no. is. Uh, go ahead. I just said no. I don't. Okay. So Victor, maybe just yeah. explain briefly what SPDX does. Yeah. I know, but that doesn't help. 
<laughs> yeah, SPX is a uh, international standard for software build material. So uh, it is. Uh, so so think of uh, uh, when you, when you buy hardware, usually or anything, you got to build right, build a material and you know, what what's the component in it. Um, so it, it, so software build material, including information about uh, what a software is about. Uh, you know what uh, because it's open source, they also have. Uh, not only this, the this information about that particular software, but also you know any other uh, software like for example Linux. Um, you have a, a different utilities, so each, each utility have their own probably software bureau material. Uh, so it's used for uh, originally for licensing purposes. To see, you know, what when you when you have open source uh, software, what kind of license it's related, uh, and then uh, later on it become um, uh, used to capture information for security purposes and, and more more and more because uh, um, uh, there are also like for example AI when you have AI uh, systems it include a lot of things uh, not only software and hardware but also AI models and AI data and all that uh, have related to a need for really identify what the component and related to security uh, licensing and, and all that information. So it's uh, quite, uh, and SBOM is required by um, a lot of um, agencies, uh, a lot of different government uh, have a requirement for uh, attaching software build material to their, uh, to any, uh, um, some, not only open source actually, but also um, closed source software also is um, sometimes it's also required to provide a software build, build material. Um, so yeah, that's so SPDX is uh, the international standard for that. Uh, so um, I'm trying to understand what is the current um, need for the uh, <clears throat> Ogre project uh, because what happened in the uh, SPDX uh, two um, dot oh, oh, two dot three um, is that um, uh, I think because of I guess the uh, there's not enough um, outreach to understand what is actually needed. So sometimes the you know whether the the spec need need additional information added or you know what, how the the format need to be changed uh, to meet any particular need, and and when the SBOM is actually created, uh, how it, it, how the end user actually use it, so all that is a, a big question mark actually a lot of times, and that's why I'm here just to um, listen and understand what what what's the need for older. I think I could speak to that at the beginning. We have a much older version of the SPDX standard, really licensing focused, where it's a, <clears throat> a license inventory that we use. I think, up, and we use a piece of software that was developed at the University of Nebraska Omaha like 14 years ago that's based on, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the platform. It uses a, a license counter tool that was distributed by a different Linux Foundation project. And I used to know the names of these tools off the top of my head, but I no longer do. And, and so from an Augur perspective, since we are tooling, I think the provision of licensing and um, SBOM-like information as declared, and that's, that's one critical thing about SPDX, is it's still uh, <clears throat> really largely a declared uh, inventory where I have my SPDX header at the top of each file and that's partly how it uh, populates in information about the SPOM, or does SPDX itself now include a larger scope of, of uh, stuff that perhaps doesn't need to be declarative? <clears throat> that would be my question back to you, Victor. Uh, I'm actually new to SPDX <laughs> myself, uh, mainly just to um, uh, really to uh, for outreach, you know, understand, uh, get, gather information. So I, you probably need to ask that question at the at the um, SDX uh, uh, community there. Uh, so, um, but one one thing. So I thought um, because Augur was listed as a SPDX, uh, I mean SPDX tool. Um, so do you create yeah. your own uh, SPDX parsing uh, tool? Or no, you, uh, no. Uh, we okay. use we use. I'm trying to remember the names of the tools. So what it does right now is this SPDX license identifier has to be declared at the top of a file at the file level for the SPDX processor, the file scanner that we use today. And I can, I can look it up, Victor. I just don't recall it off the top of my head. <clears throat> if, you want the, if you wanted to search for it yourself, um, uh, this is our project. There's a, 
adjacent project, github.com, called Augur License, where the scanner that we use is declared as an import there. That's where I'm going to go to look for it. Um, and so, you know, the version of SPX that we're on requires these license identifiers to be issued at the top of a file. And my question was really, is that pretty much how SPX still operates? Um, and, and what Augur is as a tool is an implementation of this old version of SPX using one of these old, these old file scanners from a different project. Um, so we didn't, we didn't invent any new SPDX tooling, we're just consuming it. And I think our question would be, is there a different file scanner that consumes the SPDX declared data that we ought to be pointing to at this point? That's kind of our question back to you. Yeah, I pasted uh, two links there. Uh, the bottom okay. one is the um, tool. That's where I got the auger as a part of the um, SPDX tool, actually. Uh, so, um, yeah, there, there are a whole bunch of uh, open source, some closed source tools uh, used to uh, generate um, the SPX format data from uh, whether it's software repository or uh, 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 from, uh, yeah, just to scanning. So, yeah, so the whole, whole, whole long list. Uh, th this one is the, the first, no, the other, the other link. Um, yeah, 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 this is the link for open source um, software. So, um yeah, yeah some of these these instructions are very um out of date for example um we no longer have a master branch we changed that like four years ago three years ago it's been a really long time um so some of these that link directly to a branch that no longer exists are wrong um <clears throat> do you want me to send you updates to this metadata and this link is no longer the right link either. Do yeah, you want me to send you some updates to this stuff, Victor? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Yeah, and then okay. um, yeah, the other link I, I shared uh, that's a so-called use cases because for uh, one feedback we got from community is um, for SPDX two, including two point three, um, there were not very good um, use case um, documents that give you information. So, for example. If you want to generate some uh, customized data information, you don't really want to use a tool because you have some special need. Um, mm -hmm. There, um, but you don't. Ha there's not enough information to for people to generate their own customized um, SPDX format data. So, so, so this is one of the um, examples of a, you know. Uh, this is just this, a big. Am, am I on the right page, Victor? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so this is just a, a basically so-called use case uh, information. Um, that's going to be, this is just a start, uh, there'll be a little more coming. And then, uh, so you can basically understand the, what is this for? Like why, why a spawn? Um, actually in the coming, um, uh, community call, not conferences, there are uh, additional, um, discussions about, you know, how, how the people are using S bomb, you know, is it needed? In other words, actually, you know, if you, if even the S bomb, the right solution, that's also going to be discussed. So, um, yeah, mainly for um, compliance licensing purposes, but also security, a lot of, you know, trying to understand how people uh, use this from information. So I think for um, Augur, the, which is very you know, kind of comprehensive data analysis, this could be, um, yeah, I think there should be some synergies there as well. Um, well, one, one thing that I do know about security and vulnerabilities data, and I'm actually out of time here, but is that for example, if we use an SPDX scanner to identify uh, exploits or vulnerabilities, we would not want that information populated in a public instance of Augur. We would want that information stored in a way that only the maintainers could see it, right? Because we don't want to amplify the presence of vulnerabilities in software, basically helping the black hats to find stuff to hack, <clears throat> if that makes sense. For for that, that's a totally different realm. So there's a thing called WAX um, for mm -hmm. uh, vulnerability um, uh, database. Um, yeah. 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 SPX uh, also support that, and there, yeah, there's, that's a whole different realm of things. Yeah. This is just yeah. one one <clears throat> example. 
Uh, I, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. provide uh, more information. So, um, yeah, so I guess I, I confirm that, uh, first of all, Ogre doesn't, you, you don't plan to create, create your own uh, parser, per se, to generate SPDX. No, um, and we yeah. never have. We've always used one of the scanners from a, I can't remember the name of the tool, but oh. we have always used uh, scanners built by others. We've never built our own scanner. What we have done is made the scan information available inside of our relational database so that in addition to all of the activity metrics and dependency metrics that people can get from Augur, they can have their SPDX data right there in the context of their open source software portfolio. Yeah, so it, yeah, it, in, in there, there are quite a few uh, scanners uh, per se. So, and you can also generate as bomb directly <clears throat> from, for example, GitHub. Um, so, uh, okay. Yeah, s -bomb is taking off, uh, partially because I said it's because of uh, a lot of regulations and, and, and uh, for example, Department yep. of Commerce, if you want to do business with Department of Commerce, you have to have s -bomb. Um yep. So, um, it, it is definitely, the, the, the community is booming. I uh, just want to understand uh, the Augur's role in this, in this process. We are entirely a consumer of SPX tools and data, oh, oh, tools anyway. And then we turn around and make the data available in a, a common context where lots of other repository information exists. So um, the consumer does not have to glue that data about SPDX together with the rest of their portfolio data um, using some kind of a different process. So that's, that's what we do is we package SPDX information together with all the other stuff about a repository. Is licensing going to be interesting use case for Augur, for example? If you have we have licensing. That, licensing is like 90% of what we use SPDX for right now. Maybe 100%. For, well, I'll give an example. Right now, uh, there are some hardware licenses, uh, specific licenses, but it doesn't hardware go Hardware specific licenses? Yeah. So, yeah, we um, don't look at hardware, obviously. Uh, open open spec basically i mean you yeah. call it hardware but it's actually open um open spec you can say um so um because in the past hardware is all you know there's there's no good metadata it's all like documentation word document but more and more yeah. whether it's uh, whether it's uh, you know, hardware uh, chips and you know socs and uh firmware all that there, there are a lot of components within any like ai systems so so uh, with that there are going to be a lot more complications when it comes to you know what is included in a particular ai system what kind of hardware mm -hmm. software is that yeah. analysis in scope for auger i would have to I would have to think about that. I haven't ever considered open hardware. Um, an open spec is a document, and we could conceivably think about it that way, but I think I need to spend more time talking with you, Victor. I don't know if you want to bring this up at the next Augur 8 not meeting or if you want to set up some separate time, uh, which I would be happy to uh, chat with you uh, separately to understand a little bit more about where, where this is going. Um, follow up with you on, on Slack and uh, yeah, 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 because I, I think we're definitely that question is sort of in the weeds and probably just requires a discussion um, between us. And we're like, I'm like six minutes over right now, so I need to thank everybody for participating in this Augur A Not Design meeting. Victor, I'll get together with you offline or separately, and uh, maybe we'll have some more to talk about next week. Lami, thanks a lot for all of your hard work on design. Enoch, thanks oh. for coordinating the developers. And uh, I'll see you all next week.